Okay, in today's video I want to show you some exciting new pictures that I managed to get a hold of of the Adams Thermo Magnetic Motor Generator. This is of course one you've already seen. Um, here I uh, say what the things are, like uh, this is a slide from a presentation, so you see the water tank and the two drive coils and the rotor in the center. And this is the next picture, it's a side view and you see there's insulation on the pipes now. So those were some of the only pictures I had, but now I have a couple more. So uh, first of all in the presentation I mentioned uh, this quote about uh, where Adams explains uh, the thermal motor generator and he says this machine consists of different materials the materials of which are of geo specific geometric dimensions, mass, etc., and so placed geometrically inside the rotor as to gate the awesome etheric power that is inherent in the 1.25 millimeter air gap of the machine. And he continues that he used certain materials not normally used in the construction of orthodox electrical machines, and that, that results in the manifestation of massive power in the form of heat at undreamed of ratios of input power to output power. Now, as you can see, he says certain materials, different materials, but he never says what materials he used. So the only reference I found to a certain material was in a third-party report by someone on a forum that said he knew someone who knew Robert Adams. So it's, it's you know, hearsay. Uh, but he came up with the idea that it was, uh, or he, uh, he thought it was lead that was used, and he came up with this rotor layout that I've also shown in my previous video. If you haven't seen that one, definitely check it out. I'll put a link in the top of this video. So you see there are four neodymium magnets, and then in between that are four lead plugs. And that's exactly what I uh, implemented as well. But now, with these new uh, images that I have, it seems that this is not the layout at all that Adams used, and he might not have even not even have used lead. So let's have a look at some of them. Exit the presentation. So, yeah, this is uh, one of the motors, of course, that you just saw. But then here is the back of that picture, and it says "thermo machine under construction." Okay, so this is what I based my design on but as you can see I can only see the side of the rotor I can't really look what's happening over there but then we have one that is actually um, over here and yeah it might be hard to see I'll zoom in in a little bit but it says original thermo machine under construction 1992 so this is apparently his original thermo motor and the thing is is that Let's see if I can zoom in here. No, I'll just go to Photoshop for that. Um, so it's this image. But as you can see, I, I brightened it a bit. This actually has six axial, uh, sorry, radial magnets, like his original rotors did. Um, and the interesting part is that the inside appears to be hollow. You see there's nothing there but then there's this disc at the bottom here that um, is of a material that I am not able to tell what material that is um, and that fits in there in that hollow space there so it seems like there are six magnets just so apparently the actually placed magnets uh, don't do anything special or at least uh, it also works with a radial setup. So that's an interesting point. And then it's also interesting to note that there is no lead here anywhere, you know? It's just six magnets, two drive coils that are inside these water jackets uh, for cooling and uh, for a heat extraction. And then there's this weird little disc. And so here's another few. It's a poor quality, but here you see the disc again. And it seems to have like these six holes, and in the yeah, in this this other picture, sorry, in this picture you definitely see that it has six sort of like lines here, and so I, I guess, yeah, I, I don't know how this would line up, but I guess these are these six um, um, parts to this disc, and there's also six magnets, so maybe it connects. Uh, north and south 
uh, it cr creates a path for that or something. I, I have literally no idea. I, I can't tell what material this is made of, um, but it's definitely not lead because lead has a completely different color. So that was one of the very interesting things. So let's see what else we got. So here we see another thermomotor that he was working on, but in this case the magnets are actually placed like I have. But you see there's nothing in between here. So there's just four of these magnets. And there are no lead plugs in here, but around here you see there is like a line, faint line, so it seems like there is again one of those inserts like we just saw in the previous picture. This is that same motor and here you see it even better, so there's one magnet aligned with the coil of course, and there's one magnet up there and one back there, but there's nothing in between. But you do see this little circle in the middle, so it seems like that's again some sort of insert. Now, this is an interesting one because in this rotor, uh, once I brightened it, you see there's actually something up here, like a magnet, I guess. And then another magnet down here, you see it's very faint, but... And then again, this is open, um, so something fits in there. And so that's really interesting layout, of course, and here, this is that same one, except... Um, yeah, it's pitch black because of the bad quality, so this would give us a good side view, but I, I literally can't see anything there, so that's unfortunate. I hopefully can uh, get a better quality uh, version of this one. And then here you see one of the coils inside the water jackets, and it's cool because this time we can actually see the end of the core that is still sticking out, and I, I measured this based on my previously uh, measured dimensions, and this core is exactly 15 millimeters, like... Uh, I'm using. So at least that is spot on. The rotor I have is completely incorrect, but uh, at least that is spot on. So <laughs> that's something. Now, uh, yeah, so we have this uh, picture and then this is a picture that is really cool because here you see a very powerful rotor and on the back of that rotor it actually says that it was part of a contract he had with uh, a guy called Takahashi and he was part of some Japanese company. I haven't been able to figure out the name of that, but there are all kinds of pictures of them having lunch. And uh, so they were working on this very powerful version of this motor. Now what you see is that these are big neodymium magnets. Um, that's what I got from the description on the back of the one of the pictures. But you see there's a different type of material behind it. And there's also some weird brown orangey material in between the magnets so yeah I really want to ask you guys what do you think is going on here like what type of material could this be and what could be the reason for these this strange setup here uh, and how you know is this similar yet different to the original uh, motor uh, with of course the the radial layout as well, except the the, uh, the one I just showed you had two layers of magnets and this is just one uh, layer of magnets. So maybe this disc, instead of this disc, in this rotor they have some sort of, yeah, some sort of like, uh, maybe this material goes all the way through to this side, connecting the two magnets in some way. Um, I literally have no idea and based on the color of this material I have also no clue what that could possibly be. So <laughs> if anyone has any ideas or uh, suggestions or theories please let me know because I'm very curious uh, and yeah because I don't exactly know what's going on here and I would love to figure it out. Uh, just so you guys know I'm also trying to get in touch with um, yeah, with, with Robert Adams children. He had 10 children and, um, you know, I just want to know where are all these devices that he made because he made a ton of them. In these pictures I see like at least 10 different versions of this thermomotor and so they must be somewhere and I would love to know if there are any notes or any of these devices remaining. So uh, definitely follow my channel if you want to see where this investigation uh, goes and um, hopefully we can uh, together we can all figure out what's going on here it's gonna require some detective work but uh, so stick around subscribe and uh, 
follow this research and definitely leave me a comment uh, with your thoughts about what uh, this could possibly be. Thanks.